Welcome back to the channel, Job32. A lot of you here. Thank you for tuning in once again. Um, today we've got a few top stories I want to bring to your attention. China is building more than 100 new missile silos in its western desert. U.S. warns that Islamic State of Extremists is still a world threat. And 19-year-old Jack Hallahan was exercising demons from his father in a uh, death prosecution Okay, so I want to bring to your attention some of those stories. We'll be talking about that here in a second, but first, I want to bring your attention to our sponsors. If you'll, uh, you know, want to go to my website and support this channel, please um, check it out. Uh, become uh, a buyer of these products. It, it, the website is job32elihu.greentechdirect, and you can check out these products for yourself. They have an awesome web page here. Um, you can check it out their products uh, on the products page. There's an opportunity to become a dealer yourself, and uh, it's only if you want to become a dealer, it's only like $19 a month for your own website. It's super cheap. Um, nowhere else could you start your own business for this much, but this is a company that's making products to help people. Anyway, check out the video real quick. Green Tech Environmental's proprietary technology, Active Radiant Catalysis, or ARC, provides continuous purification improving indoor air quality for you and loved ones. The active air purification featured in our Pure Air products create purifying oxidizers that are propelled into your space to hunt down pollutants and diminish them. At the same time, ions go out and charge irritating allergens like pet dander and dust, causing them to fall out of your breathing space so your family can enjoy an air of confidence. All right, so if you want to support this channel, please go to that website. I'll put the uh, link below um, where you can explore their 20 different products to improve your air quality of your house, home, automobile, work, uh, for better living. So let's talk about the first story. China is building more than 100 new missile silos, according to Washington Post. This is really interesting to me because, of course, they are one of the world powers, and they're also accusing, uh, well, Putin is accusing the United States of not being a world power anymore, and so um, anytime that's challenged, I want to see what you know our near peers are doing. And so, of course, any escalation with China or Russia would be some serious uh, provocations that we want to be aware of. Um, but it says that uh, China has begun construction of what uh, independent experts say. Put on the screen for you. Um, is a new site for uh, intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles in a desert near the northwestern city of Yumen. Let's take a picture. Of, let's take a look at this picture, the satellite image. Check that out. I mean, these are some. Uh, it looks like little dots on a page, but these are the silo sites that they're they're claiming are actual silo sites. You can see these little clouds down here with shadows. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but it's kind of interesting. Maybe it's just clouds, but. Uh, Interesting uh, possible silo sites. Uh, says it's a uh, Yemen wind farm. That's kind of interesting. Anyway, the story goes on to say that the commercial satellite image being obtained by researchers at the uh, James Martin Center for Nonproliferation Studies in Monterey, California, show work underway at scores of sites across a grid covering hundreds of square miles of arid terrain in China's Gansu province. Wouldn't it be horrible... Um, I was as I was traveling a couple weeks ago across the Midwest and seeing some of our wind farms. It's interesting, strategically speaking, that our our windmills are placed not very far apart. So if somebody wanted to take out our grid, so to speak, apart, excuse me, they're so far apart that you'd have to have one individual missile or you know per per windmill if you wanted to take them out. It's kind of crazy to, you couldn't just take out all the windmills on a windmill farm with one missile, if you will. And I'm not trying to start anything, but I'm, speaking of China, if they were to place a bunch of ICBMs in one place, like on a windmill farm, strategically it'd be ideal for them to set them apart far enough where one missile wouldn't get them all, or one, you know, attack wouldn't out Anyway, if this is a wind farm and they're putting ICBMs there, then that would be 
strategically bad in a couple of ways because not only is their energy going to be depleted if they ever get attacked in that way, but also their missiles would be... Uh... Anyway, just something to think about, you know. Um, but what does this have to do with the Bible? Well, the Bible says, you know, Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 6, that there will be wars and rumors of wars. He, he says, watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah, and they will deceive many. You are going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed. We, we would be naturally alarmed, right? Um, but he says, because these things must take place, but the end is not yet. So, be confident in what Jesus is saying here. That just because somebody's battling, uh, rattling the sabers of war does not mean that we should get all freaked out and the news medias are so so good at this i mean it is their constant narrative it it does something to the psychology of your brain you get all hyped up thinking that uh wow this is really getting under my skin and then they tell you their little story they tell you why we're justified anyway and then they make you feel all good for feeling unjustified about what the other side is doing but i want to give you biblical peace not just a justified self-righteousness like the news media tries to give you. He says, For nation will rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. It's already foretold. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these events are the beginnings of birth pains. Then they will hand you over. This is key, I think. Because, well, let's move on to the next story, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the next phase, because it has to do with this next story, I believe. In biblical prophecy. So the next story I want to bring to your attention has to do with the U.S. warning that the Islamic State uh, extremists, at least, are still a world threat. So let's take a look at the story from the Military Times and the Associated Press together have put this story together. And what they're saying, here we go, there's the Secretary of State uh, Antony Blinken accompanied by Itali it it Italy's uh, foreign minister. Um, so from Rome, they're saying, as the U.S. works on its military withdrawal from Afghanistan, members of the global coalition fighting the Islamic State group met Monday to chart future steps against the extremist group. You know, it's interesting. I, You know, we, we just heard reports, well, not reports, but last year that, um, you know, Trump defeated the caliphate of ISIS. And so what do we have left? We have other people that are still extremists, still following that same ideology, and still hating the United States and all that is West in that sense. But he's uh, this meeting came just days after the U.S. launched airstrikes against Iran-backed militias near the Iraq-Syria border. You know, we still have soldiers over there. We still have uh, armed servicemen and women um, defending borders, um, fighting for for justice over there, and so we want to be praying for them. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Italian Foreign Minister uh, Luigi Di Maio, I think I'm pronouncing that right, co-chaired the gatherings of senior officials from the seven-year-old 83-member bloc. Participants were taking stock of current efforts to ensure the complete defeat of ICE, IS, ISIS State, I guess, uh, whose remnants still pose a threat in Iraq and Syria and have shown signs of surging in parts of Africa. You know, an ideology is a really hard thing to just stamp out. If it doesn't have borders, or they don't have a flag, but they do have a flag. And so, maybe it'll be a little easier than just an ideology to defeat. But that is something to keep on your radar. You know, ISIS is not going away. But what I think it has to do with biblical prophecy is that uh, just along with what Jesus was saying in Matthew 24. Um, yeah, let me read for you here. He continues in that same line of thinking, Matthew 24, and he says, Then they will hand you over for persecution. They will kill you. You will be hated by all nations because of my name. He's talking about Christians, followers of Jesus. You know, and, and what do ex ex Islam... And Christianity are not friendly to one another. You might say Christianity is friendly to Islam, or, or conservative Islamic is friendly to Christianity. If you really look at their core doctrines, they are not compatible. If you try to make them compatible, they 
um, they contradict. You have to put away some teachings in order to make them fit together. It's not a puzzle that fits together. So if you really analyze this, there will be an attempt by some to put them together to make them work, but at the risk of key doctrines of each, probably. Both of them teach of the same characters. Uh, so a lot of the characters there in the Bible are also in the Quran and vice versa. But the Quran was created 600 years after uh, the biblical of uh, Jesus' life uh, took place. So while all of the events in the Bible were written down within the lifetime of the the happenings of them, the happenings of the Quran were written down at the hand of Muhammad, uh, far removed from any of the events that actually, uh, when they actually happened. Um, so there is a difference in, if you want to call it inspiration, uh, dictation um, from a higher being um, to, to pen them down. But uh, anyway, something to consider. But Jesus in Matthew 24 continues on. He says, Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. He foretold this long ago. Because lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold. You know, lawlessness is happening more and more today. Just from the United States perspective alone, if we're supposed to be the leader of the world in, in the respect of morality, ethics, goodness, economy, uh, politics, I, we're really just saying all kinds of weirdness, especially with this last month. I don't even want to mention it, but what they call Pride Month, you know, pride goes before it falls, what the Bible says. Uh, we shouldn't have pride. Um, pride is a bad thing according to the Bible, but we also see in the Bible, it says, calling things good uh, that were bad, and calling bad things good is what's going to happen. Um, so it's really just all coming to fruition. You know, evil people want to prop up their evil as good and justified. Well, we need to hold up the biblical model, the biblical example, the biblical truth is that God will judge everyone. And here's what he says. He continues on, the, lo the lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be delivered. So are you going to be delivered? Are you going to survive to the end? Are you going to endure um, all this persecution that is guaranteed to come? As a Christian, you're not guaranteed safety and security. You're not guaranteed uh, a better life. But what it's saying here is that you will be uh, enduring hardship. If you want to overcome, great. Um, in verse 14, it says, This good news of the kingdom, talking about the kingdom of God, will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. You know, we, ha we all have questions about when the end will come. We all have this anticipation in the back of our minds of the end of days. Have you, have you felt like that? Have you felt like we've been in the end of days? Because I sure have. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, I kind of felt like uh, we were made for this generation. We were made for this uh, time. He goes on, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but he says, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not shed its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the celestial powers will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the people of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with of heaven with power and great glory. He will send out his angels with a loud trumpet, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. So, we know what the end looks like. We know some of the foreshadowing things that, you know, are coming. We see the world in which we're living in. It's only getting closer. Of course, it could be, who knows, another three years, another 50 years, another 100 years. We really don't know. But what we do have is... The word of God, and we have to hold hold that as a witness against evil, against uh, ungodliness, and so along with that, there <laughs> there's a couple other stories I want to bring to your attention. I'm going to close this up because you've been so gracious listening this far. Thank you for tuning in. If if you're still tuned in, uh, continue to be. Um, I want to talk real quick about this. 19 year old Jack Callahan was exercising demons from father in Duxbury Pond, death. Okay, so the situation here was the guy was, I guess, thinking that his father was possessed. He was trying to baptize him. Let's just read the story because it speaks for itself. A 19-year-old man who allegedly believed 
he was exercising demons from his father before his death in a Duxbury pond, has been ordered to undergo a mental health evaluation. So now we're mixing religion and mental health. I, I can't imagine how that might be uh, brought into end times persecution. But Jack Callahan was ordered held, held without bail after pleading not guilty to a murder charge Tuesday in Plymouth District Court. Police said Callahan went to a bar in Boston Sunday night to get his father, 57-year-old Scott Callahan, who wasn't supposed to be drinking. An Uber picked them up and dropped them off at an Island Creek Pond in Crocker Park near their home in Duxbury. And Jack said his father hit him. Then the fight moved into the pond. And Prosecutor Shannon Buckingham said Callahan told investigators he believed he was baptizing his father in the pond to exercise his demons. He described that he was holding his father in the pond on his back like a baby, that he continually dunked his father's head in the water about four to eight times, that when the father started to cough and choke, he would lift his head up, and then when his father started to fight and strike him, man, this is graphic, he pushed the head back down into the water. He did so until his father was no longer struggling and floating, Buckingham Court uh, said, Buckingham said in court, excuse me. The defendant indicated to officers that he made statements to the victim at the time, stating, I left him there to decide you can come to heaven or or with me to, or hell. <laughs> I think he chose hell, he said. Wow. Callahan told investigators he blacked out and when he woke up his father was missing. Okay, so, man. Yeah, I can see how they might use this as a provoking religion as a psychosis as a psychological disorder and so look you know I, i'm going to anticipate seeing more and more mental health issues uh, mixed with religion in the news this is how persecution is going to come this is how persecution is going to cut you know uh, come at us they're going to question your mental health they're already doing this trying to get rid of the second amendment trying to get guns out of people's hands um, in california there was a story i think it was sacramento if i'm not mistaken kind of flying off the cuff here, but where they, they want gun owners to pay for um, mass shootings or, or any violence that happens to pay for those. So so gun owners in Sacramento have to uh, get some sort of additional insurance. They're probably just going to move out of town. I mean, that would be the easiest. So you're going to have a town with nobody owning any guns. I can't imagine crime increasing in a place where there's no guns to defend yourself. Okay, well, something to think about. And then last thing I want to talk about real quick is this 112-year-old Puerto Rican becomes the world's oldest living man. You ever wonder why we can't live more than 100 or so years? Well, it goes back to a promise made to Noah. And I'll just pull up uh, Genesis real quick here. You know, God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. Why did God cause the flood of Noah? And what does this have to do with lifespan? Well, let me tell you. God got tired of dealing with mankind. And he said he looked, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way on earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy the earth. And then he tells him to build the ark and the dimensions. But what I'm trying to remember what verse it is, but at one point God says the life span of man is going to be 120 years. So why, why do people only live 100 or so years? It's because God's promise. Before the, the flood of Noah, the Bible records people's lifespans as being longer. And in fact, after the flood, if you graphed it all out, I mean, I should just show you guys a graph, shouldn't I? Man, uh, uh, it's graphed. You could do searches on the lifespan of people. And right around the mark of Noah's flood, the lifespan starts decreasing sharply. Um, from 900 years to 7, 6, 5, 3, all the way down to 120 years. So, there's some evidence that what the Bible says is actually true. Now, you know, take it for what you want. But that's why people only live 120 years. So here's this guy living 112 years old. You think he can make it past 120? Now, supposedly there's a few people who've lived past 120. But I would, I would think, I, I really suspect that perhaps their birth records might not have been that accurate. 
maybe off a few years. Who knows? But here's this guy, 112 years old, almost 113. Um, was born in 1908. Recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records. Anyway, that's uh, that's. Okay, I'll throw in one more story. Because of the coronavirus, here's one from ABC News. Amish put faith in God's will and herd immunity over the vaccine. So here we go. The Amish are, in general, not wanting to get this COVID vaccination, okay? Um, because they're putting their faith in their deeply religious views. Now, what the story says here, it says, when healthcare leaders in Pennsylvania, Dutch country, began laying out strategy to distribute COVID-19 vaccines, they knew it would be tough to sell with to the Amish, who tend to be wary of preventative shots and government intervention. Early on, they posted flyers. Anyway, by May, two rural vaccination clinics had opened and a fire station. Anyway, the bottom line is that there were only 12 Amish that signed up at this particular event. So, I mean... Um, the stats are showing the see in, in Ohio's Holmes County, just for example, home to the nation's largest concentration of Amish, just 14% of the country's overall population is fully vaccinated. I'm not sure. I think they, yeah, counties, not country. So, you know, they're resisting it for their faith. I mean, they believe that God is going to take care of them. They're, they're not getting it from the TV. They're not watching TV. They're not reading it on the Internet, you know. They're not getting any of this contradictory information about the vaccine from any other information other than their tradition, their faith, and their way of life. They're simple, simply reflecting uh, rural America. Uh, maybe they have the same attitudes as most country folk. Who knows? Anyway, interesting article. Check it out on ABC News um, for yourself if you want to read more detail. Again, please... Visit my uh, sponsorship page. Go to job32elahu.greentechdirect.com and you can buy some of those wonderful air filtering products. It's not just an air filter. It is an air ionizer. It puts uh, ions into the air that coat not only uh, the air you breathe, but the walls, the surfaces. Uh, your whole space is going to be clean. They have products for your car, your refrigerator. Maybe you want to clean up the cigarette smoke from your car or, or a office space. They have some wonderful products. Please check it out, and you'll be supporting this channel. Uh, God bless. Please like, share, subscribe this message. God bless.